Good afternoon to you, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Friday, the 20th of October, 2017. As we look at the last 10 days of October, the last third of the month, climatologically speaking, from 1851 through 2015, this is the distribution of named storms, tropical cyclones that would include hurricanes, and you can see that for the most part, most of the activity this time of year, at least in terms of where it's concentrated, is down here in the Western Caribbean. Now, you have this larger area, but it is more spread out over a larger geographic region. This is where it's the most concentrated, and even that being said, it's not very much. In the Eastern Pacific, less and less activity overall, as the hurricane season in both basins begins to wind down, uh, this is what we typically see during the last third of the month of October, with again, the emphasis here on the Western Caribbean, some in the Gulf of Mexico, certainly that would be like the secondary area, uh, maybe the Western Atlantic, but then the rest of this is just kind of random. I wouldn't worry about it too much in terms of, well, certainly these, you can just look at the tracks. Most of those never affected land, uh, but you see one of them in here, Look at that. There's Sandy. Right there. Hard to trace it out. Something like that. Remember Sandy? Yeah, Sandy's in there in that database during this part of the time history. Going back to 1851, Sandy obviously in 2012. So there you go. That's how it fits into things. Nothing like Sandy on the horizon, at least I don't think so. But there are some rumblings now in the hurricane, blogosphere, the social media world, chat, message boards, etc., that maybe something's going to try to develop in the Western Caribbean uh, between now and the end of October. So I figured, well, let's talk about it and see what we see. So first of all, we need to find out, is that even a possibility? And, you know, the climatological part is the first answer to that question, and the answer is yes. Then we need to see, our ocean temperatures warm enough? And over here in the Western Caribbean, in fact, a good deal of the Atlantic Basin still, upper ocean heat content, and thus the sea surface temperatures as well, not just at the surface, but far below, are quite warm all the way across from the Cabo Verde Islands here. We used to know these as the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, through the subtropical Atlantic, even off the southeast coast, with the exception of the shelf water, right up against the coastline, and the same is true along the Gulf of Mexico. Everything else is quite warm, even as we head into the latter part of October. In fact, if we look at the actual sea surface temperatures here, um, this would be your 28 degrees Celsius, or about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. This is 29 Celsius, so you can see there's still a large area of very warm water residing in the western Atlantic Basin. And if we zoom in and look at the Gulf of Mexico, only the shelf water regions up here in the far northern Gulf Coast, Florida Panhandle, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and even the offshore waters of Texas, that's where the cooler waters reside, and this will cool from north to south, but farther to the south, the Caribbean Sea and the southeast Gulf of Mexico, still with very warm water, uh, 82, 83 degrees in some locations. And so that part of the question as to whether or not something could develop the answer is yes as well. Sea surface temperatures and available energy, uh, that's not lacking. So now we check and see, is there anything out there, a pre-existing feature to watch? And over the next 48 hours, the answer is no. And over the next five days, the answer is no. So what am I even talking about? Well, we will get to it. So just looking at a still shot here, a visible image, uh, you can, without even putting this into motion, you can see there's very strong upper level wind coming across this region, uh, strong upper level winds here, and strong upper level winds blowing all this apart. So you can just tell that right now, conditions are not favorable. However, we are not concerned about right now necessarily, and so if we just look as an example at Storm 2K, this is one of the message boards that's been around for a long time. And we can just kind of scroll through their thread that's called the 2017 Global Model Runs and Discussion out to day 16. So this is where topical information on tropical uh, activity is posted and people can discuss it um, friendlyly, right? Amicably, that's the word I'm looking for. There's no L-Y on friendlyly. 
amicably. And really, this is where we can post things in context, and people don't just get all excited about something. And when I say excited, I don't necessarily mean in a good way. This is one of the forums that I check. And so this tells me, this is the chatter that I talk about. And if we just scroll and look through the, the last couple of days, this is updated yesterday. And this poster here, Gator Kane, pointing out that the UK Met is indicating development down in the Western Caribbean. And we can just scroll through and just see what people are talking about. Different models, people say different things about them. Uh, we look at the graphics, some of the ensemble members here. Yesterday afternoon indicating uh, the GFS ensembles, uh, showing a bullseye of development in the Western Caribbean, and on and on it goes. You can just kind of scroll through here. The oranges indicate a more densely packed area that the models are showing. And again, looking at the ensembles, instead of just one operational run like this, you look at this, you know, this is from the Canadian GEM, and you say, oh my goodness, that's terrible. Yikes, well, not so fast. You know, how reliable is the model? How far out into time is it? Well, these are the things that are discussed in context on this particular board. And then we just kind of scroll and see what else shows up. And the consensus here, and that's what I'm looking for, is through the various models, the UK Met, the European, the GFS, and its ensembles, uh, and yes, the, you know, the, the, usually convective active, the convectively active Canadian, the CMC, indicating, yes, there's a chance of development. And you see people posting stuff on Twitter. And so we can go and look at that uh, separately, if this will let me. And yes, the density here uh, from the European Ensemble Prediction System also indicating the possibility of development in the Western Caribbean. And so that's what I take away from this, that the area that we need to watch is, in fact, right down here. See? See how that works? So instead of trying to figure it out, is a hurricane headed my way in two weeks, which there's just no way to figure that out, I want to look at the, you know, the notion of, is there a possibility of a hurricane developing or a tropical storm developing in a particular area over the next couple of weeks? And if so, why? And in this case, climatology favors it. The water temperatures are still warm enough. The models are starting to show it operationally and in their ensemble prediction systems, plus a favorable Madden-Julian oscillation of upward motion will be moving across the Pacific and into this area, favoring a lot of rising motion in the atmosphere. So this is sort of your alarm going off, if you will, and saying, hey, look, time to wake up. We've had a little bit of time off since Nate. Maybe something developing down the road that we want to keep an eye on. And with land down here, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands over here, Cuba and Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, etc., Central America, you never know, right? We need to keep an eye on this stuff, even if it's, quote, just a tropical storm. They can dump copious amounts of rainfall, and there's at least a couple of areas through here that would just rather see no more copious amounts of rainfall for any time to come. Uh, even though the fresh water could be useful, not when it comes down 5, 10, 20 inches at a time. So we need to watch and see what happens over the next couple of weeks or so. Probably the next 10 days or less to focus in a little better. So by Monday, and I'll be back Monday, just a little give away the ending here, um, no update tomorrow or Sunday, but I'll be back Monday to talk about it. We'll see. It'll be coming into focus a little better by Monday. Meanwhile, in the Western Pacific, this is the other clue. It's active in the Western Pacific right now. We have Typhoon Lan, and it's got a large CDO, Central Dense Overcast, with a very large, well-defined eye. And this one is headed towards Japan, probably going to make landfall south and west by a good distance of Tokyo, which is right there, sometime over the weekend. And it'll bring a lot of energy with it, flooding, wind energy spreading over a huge area of Japan up here. you got to remember that Tokyo is at roughly the same latitude on the globe as Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, plus or minus a few tenths of a degree. Uh, and so think about it. If something is headed towards Cape Hatteras this time of year, 
you know, if it's very large and sprawling, sure, you can have some big impacts. But the odds of an intense hurricane, or in this case, typhoon, hitting Tokyo are about as the same as they would for Cape Hatteras, as an example. Probably not going to see an intense system, but remember, the impact here could be a large one over a good deal of Japan over the next several days, so we'll need to keep an eye on that as well. And then once this dies down, the energy in the atmosphere, the upward motion, is going to migrate eastward in about the next week to ten days, and voila, once again I refer to this, we will need to watch this area. So now you understand how that works and why we can generally sniff something out way ahead of time that the possibility is there for a window of development to open. It doesn't mean that it will, and it doesn't mean that it has to, but it certainly is a possibility. All right? So don't worry about it over the weekend. Enjoy whatever weekend plans you've got, unless you're in Japan, in which case you need to be preparing for Typhoon Lan, especially south and west of the Tokyo area. But really, that's a big system, so it's going to affect a lot of people with a lot of big impacts over a larger area. Um, we've seen that before with some of our hurricanes, right? So same holds true over there. They don't have to be all that intense for them to have big impacts. So we shall see. By Monday, it'll have made landfall, and we'll be talking about what happened instead of what's going to happen. So have a good weekend. Again, I am Mark Settle for HurricaneTrack.com. As always, thank you for tuning in. I will be busy this weekend tending to other things, but with nothing pressing. We'll reconvene and talk about things again on Monday.